This episode was brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. I'm Marley Oxenome here at Securing Hardware in San Francisco, and I'm speaking with some of the trainers that are here today. Would you mind introducing yourself for me? Sure. My name is Joe Grand. Sometimes people call me Kingpin, and uh, I'm a hardware hacker and electrical engineer. Nice. Okay. And would you tell me more about your training today? Sure. So this class is sort of like a comprehensive view of hardware hacking where, you know, a lot of the classes kind of focus on specific attacks. This one kind of is this overarching view of different processes we can look at as far as like looking at the board, identifying components on the board, looking for interesting interfaces, how to modify um, a system, how to mm -hmm. sniff communications, how to inject communications. So sort of kind of a, a little bit of everything to let people understand where they maybe want to focus future attacks or future designs. Okay, nice, very cool. And what would you say is one of the most important things that students take away from the training? Um, what I really try to get is less about how to use like a specific tool and more about that mindset of thinking about how a hacker is gonna attack a product. Um, so if they're on a design side, they can say, okay, I need to lock down these things. Or if they're on an attack side, thinking about what the engineer has to deal with and the constraints that an engineer has, and then trying to exploit those. So it's really more of a mindset instead of like a specific, like here's how to use the tool. Okay, nice. Good stuff. And now I know you've created a lot of devices in the past, like the J-Tagulator over the years. Can you tell me more about them and if you have any other new ones planned as well? Sure. So one of the things that I, that really get, that I really get interested in is kind of designing things that other people can use to learn or use as a building block for something else. Mm -hmm. um, so the J-Tagulator is one tool that uh, kind of bridges the gap in hardware hacking between finding like an interesting interface on a board mm -hmm. and then how to exploit it and what to do with it. So the J-Tagulator will connect up to a bunch of test points on a circuit board or a connector on a circuit board that you might not know what it is, but maybe you think it's JTAG or some mm -hmm. other programming interface and will try to find the pinout for you. So you don't have to go through the manual process of figuring it out. So it's sort of empowering people to get involved in hardware and get involved in hacking without having to do necessarily all the legwork. Okay. Um, and that's really what I like to do. So like this other board that I have in the class is, mm -hmm. is a little G-shaped circuit board. Yep. And it's the same sort of thing of like empowering people to learn the skills in a controlled way. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's kind of what I, what I try to do. Um, as far as other projects, I've been working a lot with um, optical covert channels recently because I think those are really cool mm -hmm. as far as ways of like hacking a device to blink lights in a way that's undetectable to the human eye but wow. can still exfiltrate data to something else. Um, and it's just like a fun topic that it's been covered a lot in academia and even in, in the hacker world, but I just wanted to learn how it was done. Um, so I built some circuitry, some receiver circuitry to let people explore that and let myself explore that. So that's something that um, I'm kind of fixing up and that's going to be released at Black Hat Europe, uh, a new revision of it. I have stuff out there now, but this sort of revised a little bit um, and updated. So it's, you know, just that's the kind of stuff I like working on of just building hardware that maybe is useful to people, maybe not, but it's definitely, it's always interesting to me. And then if I can inspire other people, that's great. Oh, that's awesome. Really good stuff. And so I was wondering, what's the most interesting attack to you, at least you're demonstrating in class? Um, one of my favorites is, and this is sort of a common thing across lots of platforms, is monitoring communication. And a lot of times where, um, you know, engineers aren't thinking about the fact that somebody can open up a device and listen to communication between two chips. Mm -hmm. You know, we think a lot about JTAG interfaces and programming and UART interfaces, um, or, you know, people monitoring network traffic with Wireshark or something. But thinking about chip to chip communication is something that a lot of people need to start thinking about because engineers are passing data back and forth that could be useful, but it's totally in the clear. So one of the exercises we do is using a logic analyzer to sniff communication between a chip uh, microcontroller and external memory to see what's going on. And we can get really interesting information about how the system's working and about a, a, the specific security mechanism in the circuit that the students have to break. Okay, cool. And now I was wondering if, you know, for a beginner, if, are there any books or online resources that you would recommend to somebody that wants to start off? Um, thinking about, it's hard, it's sort of hard. Uh, I don't really have any good books, but I think resources um, what I always tell people is like, try to find a product that you're somewhat interested in that somebody else has already hacked. Mm -hmm. So if it's a router, you know, there's lots of, um, like the Linksys WRT54G has been hacked a lot. There's a lot of devices okay. that now like run DDWRT or OpenWRT. Oh. So find a device maybe that's already been hacked that you can replicate somebody else's attack okay. and then add on that and like do something a little bit more to learn. Good practice yeah. devices. Just like practice, so, so you're not starting from scratch with an unhacked thing, mm -hmm. you're sort of you know, standing on the shoulders of somebody else, because that's really what the hacker world is all about, of like yep. you know, learning something that somebody else has done and then building upon that. 
Nice. That's really good advice. And lastly, what got you interested in this field? Um, so that's sort of a long story, but I've, I've been involved in the hacker world um, since 1982, since I was wow. seven years old awesome. and just fell in love with computers, fell in love with electronics, um, you know, figured out how to make free phone calls when I was 10 years old oh, to nice. connect to bulletin board systems. And it's just something that just kind of happened. Like I'd always been interested in sharing information and, and empowering other people. Um, and it just happened that hardware became uh, you know, an interesting, important part of computer security, yeah. uh, and that the hacker community kind of turned into more of a more of an industry. So it's like more people are interested, um, and as long as I keep getting excited about it, I'm going to keep doing it and sharing it. So like, it's just a, it's a great time to be a hacker. Yeah, absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much for speaking with me today. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. This episode was brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online.